All right, welcome back to another game. This is Citizen Sleeper um, on Steam. I saw it, thought it looked pretty interesting, so I'm going to try it out. Uh, might just end up being one episode, but you know, we'll see. I think it looks fun. So yeah, we'll try it out. Let's see, new game. Ooh, we can choose our class. We have a machinist. Um, let's see, a machinist repairs and modifies. Uh huh. Better engineers and less engage. So I guess engage is kind of more uh, head on. Okay. Operator, better interface, digital interfaces. Um, less strength. Okay. Extractor has better endurance, but less intuition. Sunbathe Thai's actions allows energy recovery at home. Um, chance again, cryo on interface actions. I think we're gonna go with Machinist as a start. Um, I don't know if there's like different... I don't know if there's any different um, difficulties for these, but we'll, we'll just go with Machinist for now. Alright. Oh, that's really loud. Hang on. I'm going to turn the game volume down a tiny bit. Sorry about that. That ended up being a lot louder than I thought it would be. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting, minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Cryo is cryptocurrency, okay. Uh, it's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt to be real to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Uh, well, think of that body. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood a welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach until you can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the adult nature of this new body, given your current circumstance. The walls of the container feel immediately present cold hard at your back and face, cramping up your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous systems. It isn't painful. Not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent, there is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Remember the others, I guess? You remember that there were ten of you, ten that could no longer stand the indentured work, the routines, the slow decay, ten whose belief that in the promised future that was slowly dismantled day by day, until they realized they had sold away everything they could and would ever matter. Ten that would escape, or at least die trying. Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but a freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough, enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock, even if the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. I guess we'll try to rest. But you are restless. Try to rest, but you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of the damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. 
You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again to nudge this false body into a delta into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind and once again recoil a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes, the cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but in the, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release their your joints release from their rigor. Sound too. Everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light, white as the cold, softer and softer until a haze of a, until, until in a haze of dirty yellow a figure appears. You are out. Okay, uh, this is a spaceship. No data, no items. Dragos, a pragmatic and private salvager. It has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of a scrapyard, swaddled in the reflected folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornate curving element of an improvised heater. Huh. Hello, Dragos. You are surrounded by an by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, surrounded, cr some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds, along with their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, are you, th you all thawed yet? Uh, let's reply. Let's reply. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance in Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragus comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his headset with its glinting eyes. The mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drone perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. Well, that's, uh... That's reassuring. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he is just figuring out what to do with you. Uh, let's ask what happened to them. He ignores your question. I won't ask you what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. And you're just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You're not along. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you would get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things that you know, but not the things you feel. You're no longer that person, you're an offshoot, a copy. Okay, so I guess we're in some sort of cyborg body. What you don't know is what's ahead, at least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it, that body of yours is falling apart. It's the same as any sleeper who makes it out, as an art wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep a hold of you, then no one else can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in a built in dependence on regular administrator supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye, the station, you'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. Uh, there's an old fighter container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling as much valuable scraps these days, so you're welcome to it. 
Uh, something wells up inside you. Emotion, fatigue. You shakily get to your feet and nod. Alright, you head on out there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Dragos stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Tutorial. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas, perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest, so I assume there's multiple homes. Uh, resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Click lo Select locations by clicking on their icon. Uh, not much else I can do right now, so I guess we'll head to the empty container. I guess cycles is basically the day time in this context. You wake up curled in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time you still find this body, the one you wake up now, strange and disjointed. Its message readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are, on this rune station millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Uh, building a new life, I assume. Maybe you did get lucky finding yourself here. Maybe here on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Sure. Maybe be, maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragus has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud on the stove, begin to boil water. Uh, damp wood and you sprinkle into the liquid. Uh, as the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like a station but skeletal and ghostly, a web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images and it is uh, long after you've finished drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stuff as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Tutorial, okay. Uh, condition represents the current state. It depletes by one segment each cycle. Can also be damaged. You have a breakdown if it's empty, so right now we're at flickering. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a half. Basically 12. And we need to figure out how to keep it up. That's fine. Action dice. You roll action dice. Uh, I assume those are numbers. So 5, 3, 4, 6. Number of dice rolled is based on your condition. The worst condition, the fewer dice. Uh, once you have used all your dice, you cannot take any further actions, and I assume higher dice means a higher chance of uh, doing something. You need to eat to survive. This represents your energy bar down here. We have two out of five. Uh, you can refill energy bar by eating, but we need to get food. Uh, two segments each cycle if we're starving. Starving energy loss becomes condition loss, and your condition will also deplete at double the rate per cycle. Okay, so we really need to keep energy up. Okay, uh, what do we do here? I guess we leave the empty container for now. Dragus has stood in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Eh, okay. I mean, we're, like, over half. Kind of low energy. 
The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So I'm not gonna shit chat too long. You well enough to work? Sure. I mean, that'll be... We need to get some way of getting cash and food. Alright then. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these hulls down, sell them off to shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands on here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few shits of commissions based on what you turn up. Kites? Shites? These. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Airwalled cryo isolated from the market. It's what we use for to trade for out here. Okay, so kind of fake, fake money. Well, not fake. Uh, black market money. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd best... You'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can in sleepers Well, he trails off. But things being the way they are for me at the yard, he pauses, I need to help. You know what? You kind of helped me out. I'll be happy to. Uh, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher, there's plenty to do. Okay. He nods distractedly, turns and walks away. See you later. See ya. Alright. Um, not much else to do. Yeah, there's some active scenes that we need to do, I guess. Okay. Actions are the primary way to interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. We drag action dice in. Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, and the plus one means that I get more chance of doing something Okay, okay. Critical actions can only be performed once. Safe, risky, or danger. Safe means no matter what, we're fine. Risky means negative outcomes, we'll lose stuff. Danger means we really need to be careful. Skill, uh huh. Modifier. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Okay, so since this is plus one, it means that I can put four in, and I'll become five. So 50% positive and 50% uh, neutral. Or I can do this, and I will guarantee myself a positive action. Um... I think we're just gonna... You know what? We'll just go with... Yeah. We'll just go with that. I'm not gonna save dice yet. I mean, even this would be... Eh. And that, I guess. We'll go with... Yep. We'll start the action here. Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them, and they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Dragger's debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks take themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. Okay, oh I see. Um, so I can put this here, since it's repeatable. In certain sleepers, you un unlock drives. As you discover more about yourself and the world, drives guide you to pursuing specific objectives. You can track drives, and any track drives will put a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal. Arrow at the top left, so this one. Survive, we need to find a doctor. You are now free to explore Erlin's eyes to make your life for yourself here. Try, 
tracking a drive to help you survive, look for food, fill clocks, and cycle when you're out of dice. Okay. So can we leave here? I see, okay. Let's look at that. Uh, Helion Crossing. <clears throat> Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helion systems are rare, but they always do return eventually. Doesn't look like I can do anything here at the moment. So I guess we'll just do everything here. Three and four are the same, so I might as well... Hmm. I feel like I should just go with the safe one for this. Uh-huh. Okay, neutral outcome. Plus 10 cryo, plus back in business. And a 6. What happens if it's a 7? Nothing. Okay. Okay. 15 cryo, plus plus back in business. We have 55 now. Uh, that's all the thing we have, but yeah, we can't do anything here yet. Um... Ooh, okay. Uh... Okay, so we, since we have plus one engineer already... Scrap components at home to repair condition. That requires two upgrade points. Some bits transfer. Okay, okay. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Right, I guess now we'll just end cycle. Now that we're out of dice, at least. This time, you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station that shaking skeletal ring surrounds you. For a moment, you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void, then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions, as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into millions of disturbed nodes they connect to. You see the station. No, you feel the station. Like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, and follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers, and then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering as you do things as you do things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling pulling at you insistently as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling you in two directions at once, you look down. All of a sudden, Everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind. A storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored. And then it is gone. Okay, our condition is lowering, we're starving, and so we're only at that now. Doesn't look like we can do anything here. Uh, we need to finish this one, I think. So let's go with... 
We'll go with these. Negative outcome, three cryo. Okay. Oh, I should have I should have saved it. I should have just done this actually. And saved a three. Whoops. Okay. That completes that clock that cycle. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across the vast dark shapes suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't it? Is ah, she's a beauty, isn't she? Draga stands to the side, focus on the hulking ship as it lowered as it is lowered into the yard. Yep, yeah, she is. I mean, assuming we are talking about the broken ship. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gain the same enthusiasm as Dracus for this monstrous craft. You can't help but, th but think of what became of its crew. Yeah, what happened? What do you mean, he glances at you. I managed to convince her salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what happened. I mean, the ship. Not my concern, he shrugs. Um, hmm. I know I said you, should, you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. Watching you wonder if you arrived in similar fashion. Uh-huh. After these past cycles, I think we're up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship in Balzant on its side, Winterlight. Let's do it. He claps on the back, glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattering ship as the drones start cutting. And then you slip out. New upgrade point. Uh, and new drive discovered. Uh-huh. Right, so we can now do upgrades. One upgrade point means that I can do these ones. Except for engage. For engage, I can just do uh I can just make it so that instead of minus one it's just zero. Um I think we're gonna go actually I'm gonna not bother with it for now. Okay, we have no Okay, here we go. We have Engineer here, but it's dangerous. <laughs> and we also have Prolinza Troll, which is safe. Which I probably, which I would have at 3 for, but I don't have it right now. Uh-huh. So this one will give me some stuff. This one will give me that. Okay. Investigate the wreckage. Oh, uh, yeah. I oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, wait. Whoops. I didn't even realize that I have... that I can move around. Okay, let's look at some of this stuff. Um... Uh, we don't have the money for accessing the low end. Uh, we don't have... We should have spent dice here. Okay, next time we're gonna spend, spend dice here, just to get the... Oh, but this is a critical action. Okay, if I have... There's a minus one though. That's a minus one. That's kind of annoying. 
This one will be done in four cycles. That's uh, minus one and dangerous. We're not going to be doing that one in a while. Uh, Haven Edge runs a rotunda. Uh huh. Okay, so I should. This is minus, so I assume that's bad. I don't want to fill that up. This is good, so I do want to fill this up. So it's almost in my best interest to... What's down here? No tourists here. All materials. Okay, this is fine. Okay, okay. I think it's in my best interest to make it so that this becomes zero, almost. I'm gonna do it. No, no more, no backs there. Okay, I need, I need to do this though. If I get a six, that's my directions for sure. I only need three to get this, so six. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, but I mean, right now we just need to end cycle. Condition is gonna go down to double, but... Yeah, whatever. I think we'll be okay. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place flickering in the flow. Between the threads you see bright shapes caches of shimmering light between transparent cycle forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring through the forms and leap off into the void. You begin to understand these are nodes and connections, a map of information of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse, but you begin to try. Let's focus on the threads. There are more threads that you can count. You choose one that passes nearby and approach it. As you inspect it, you understand why you instinctively chose the word thread when you saw them. They are not single lines, but rough, fuzzy things, woven from data strings of all kinds. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There is so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down and you see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. We we'll go along the first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the threat to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching closer with each cycle. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. Someone out there is tracking you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cycles to do something. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While you there, you can use dice and items to extract systems to access systems and extract data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. Uh, that's too far away. This is close by.
Data actions allow you to extract data from networks of the eye. They work like dice actions, but you must match the dice. Uh, plus one and plus two gives more possible ones. Okay, so this one I need a one, which I do have. Uh, let's not... I'm not going to do that yet, though. I'm just going to kind of look through... I need a Solheim Cypher. Uh-huh. Okay, that one needs a 2. I don't have a 2. I do have a 3. Oh, it, it's Mining Cryo. So that could be a nice, a potential source of some gang and fortress implants. Some implants are chirping out signals. That needs a cipher. That needs a two. Okay. That needs a two. Um, okay, uh, the yard. Draga seems increasingly nervous. Uh, we should be careful around Dragos, I guess. Um, but we need a doctor. And so, here we go. Um, I think we're gonna throw a 5 into here. Actually, no, a 5 into here should be fine. Um, this way, because the worst that, that can happen is neutral, and I'm okay with neutral. Okay, positive outcome, perfect. Plus 3 local knowledge. Um, good, so we can leave and come back, I assume. Nice. Okay. Uh, we can sell components. There's a trusted trader. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play the exchange. Flow of kites and components. I'm just going to call this kites just so I don't get randomly... Yeah, reported for, or something like that. Uh, the flow of kites and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some good titrates net you a good margin. Okay. Okay, let's talk to the doctor. Sabine. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer at the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hat block. They have all made the long queue a test of your nerve, but your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Uh, let's check out the Enforcer. The Enforcer is looking down the corridor and you dare to glance up at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He is there to intimidate, to threaten, and, if necessary, to carry out those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with a metal exoskeleton. A couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes like mercury teardrops. Subsidiary sense inputs or aesthetic markers, you are unsure. You also aren't familiar with the geometric blade like tattoo, that's probably something we should note, on his arm, but you make a note of it. Oh, yeah, there we go. You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through a plastic sheeting on the far door. 
The room beyond is bathed in a warm light. A floor to ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of Wright Market's sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above, and for a moment you are transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, calls a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turn away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You made your way across the room. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak, they blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Please, said. They gesture to the bed and then turn, in, turn to an open case of tools on the table. You said. Sabine turns a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed. Um, fear, recognition, sadness unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on a cycle? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. Yeah, let's be let's be truthful here. A few cycles. It's good that you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm gonna start by assuming you don't know anything. Good assumption. You take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. Yes, we did know that. Um s and Arp doesn't like to see its proprietary technology let loose to prevent bodies like you, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping. They built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Uh-huh. Frames decay rapidly, da da da. Sound familiar? Yes. Good. That may help. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, Sarbine says. You're unsure if they mean vertical touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers, as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. And Epson Orb has no reason to release Stabilizer into the, mar into the market. Sabine looks up as to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know a little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instru instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and as then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something. Anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice, they gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside, the enforcer. You nod. He works for my benefactor, Yadagan. They're influential in the lowland. They give me the space to work, run the door, and to take up the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yadagan has connections. Smugglers from the starboard belt. Mercenaries working for the corporation on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, Maybe you'll have a better chance. But this this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive. But I think we can do it. Uh, I kind of want to ask why, but let's just be grateful. Thank you. Sabine walks away to the window, their face dabbled by shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower end of the market, you look back through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. So there's Sabine. Three cycles. It'll take three cycles to get there. Ooh, food. Emphis, the food vendor. His broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. Uh, with precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok. His other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables in some red flecked dressing. The smell is incredible. Uh, uh -huh. Let us approach. 
You join the queue, it's mostly made up of off-duty salvagers, fax suits, and zipped and rolled down to expose their state vest. We have 85, right? Yeah, we have 85. That should be enough. They discuss the best food on the eye, the best drink, uh, the roads cut through heavy spacer slang. First try is free. Thank you. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks the earthiness of a fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. I know you, you sleepers, Emphis says while he cooks, his deep voice deep and clear. A hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story. Yep. Uh-huh. We tell him how we got here. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container and the endless cycle spent within it. Now it seems you tell him like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and you are unsure of where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more, he smiles, but next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner side and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves at you and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric pattern of circular scars on his forearms, each surrounded by a constellation of glinting pin marks. These, I assume. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Three. Nice. Okay. Um. Build a ship mind. Where is that? That's here. We need to gain access to the Ort Fabricator. Get to know Emphis. Uh, that's just eating there. How much does it cost? 15. We have plenty. We have a lot. We can definitely, we're, we're gonna not lose a lot of health for a bit, which is good. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, we have three and a one. We have a three and a one. Um, this is 60. Yeah, this is 60, which I don't want to pay yet. Um... Okay, that one I need to wait. Uh, yeah, that one's also out. Okay, here we go. These are both risky. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to trigger this, for sure. So, let's... I think we're gonna spend the other two. Um, what is this one? Three. I need a soul helm cipher for that one. Orbited by remains of corporate countermeasures broken long ago. I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna spend the other two here just because I want to. I just wanna see what's up with these. Uh... Okay, unlocked. Let's extract data. Encrypted key. Able to unlock the station's aging Mac locks. Okay, so we can now get past some stuff. Uh, yet again, agent. Uh, considering the fact that the doctor is looking into the Yatagan, this might be 
This might be a good place to go. Let's do it. Yaragan data. Okay. Ooh. As you drift back from the node, something latches onto you, a thread. A strong tight around you, it tethers you to the, uh, in a place. I cannot talk. That sentence is weird. A thread strung tight around you, it tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. It's sourced somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown, astringent, processing. Let's stay still. Let's not fight something here. Hunter. Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature, in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape paces around you on light legs, though there is no ground here to pace on. Entity, identified, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Ooh, uh... I don't think... I don't think it's malicious. I'm just gonna go with honesty for now. Unknown. Known. The figure strands strange head rotates. Brackish signature. Of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head, thick snaking vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Let's just say stop. Oh boy. Uh, entity. Your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? Uh... I'm a person. Incorrect. You are an entity. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. I will find access. I will interface. A sealed dock. An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. I will not be diverted from my task. It goes with murderous intent. Let's strike. You lash out with all your force, not a physical strike, but a focusing, a spike of interfering, leaping out like a tip of a spear. The hunter stumbles, shifts, separates, and we wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station light, shaking with fear. I see, so we can't do too much. If we do too much, the hunter comes at us, so we have six more. In six and six uh, things, the hunter will come at us. Got it. Um. Okay, I don't, don't have anything else I can do at the moment. I think we're gonna... Okay, so build a ship mine is this one, but we need to wait. We need to wait for a lot more cycles, it looks like. And this one. Mm, I'll do this if I get a six. If I get a six, I'll try these. Um, what does this one give? On engineer actions. What's engineer actions? This one. This one's an engineer actions. So if I get a 6, if I get a 5, I'll do Cutter Salvage. If I get a 6, I'll do that other one. Okay, let's end cycle here. Six, four, one. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wake up. 
sleeper wait up uh will turn Feng comes down the corridor towards you a wonky grin on his broad face hey glad i caught you do i know you he grins you do now you, he puts a hand on your arm i've seen you hanging around just want to chat you staying in that thing he nods back to the container shaking his head rough can be hard to get start on the eye he looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlin said? The eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but well, not always practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Uh, we? You pass together into the main hallway, Havenage. We are all one dysfunctional family. Ben puts his arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though, don't worry. I'm with systems. I'm assuming Haven Edge is the front end. There's the lower end and then I assume Haven Edge is the front end. Systems. Everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin. But systems keep it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look. That's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around and well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a little proposition for you. But... This is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then when you are settled, stop by. In truth, I need you. If what they say if what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. Okay. Um oops, sorry about that. Not sure how much I trust him, but sure. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. And he's gone. Uh, is that a new thing? Uh-huh. I have a six, four, and one. Okay, um... Ha ha ha. With the six. <clears throat> With the six, I kind of want to steal do dock plans. They'll give me information, which is good. Uh, this would also be nice, but this needs six cycles to get. Um, and getting scrap components is much safer there. First things first though, I'm gonna eat. Yeah, let's eat. So that's one. Okay. Yeah, so I assume I need to eat three more times, which is fine. Um, okay. Okay, the one I'm gonna put in here, for sure. So let's do that. Because otherwise the one is not too useful. Another encrypted key. Okay. We're safe there. This one's almost done. One more cycle. Okay, the six, um... We're gonna steal the dog plants. Perfect. Okay, so we now have the sealed dock here. I do have an encrypted key. I need two, it looks like. Um... And then there's a bar. We can buy rations. It will be 10 cryo. Uh, we can also just get a drink. And in 3 we will gain... Uh, we can gain trust after 3 rounds. Okay. Um, let's do that then. Okay, 
that gives me one energy. So we're now full energy. That's good. Um, uh, it's risky. No, I'm gonna go to the uh, I'm gonna go to the shipyard and study the winter light for that. Yeah. Cause this gives me five, which is pretty solid. I need to complete this before Drago's nerves goes out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more cycles, huh? Four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay, hang on one second. Or I do this. It's one of the two. Uh, we'll do... Mm, we'll do... We'll do Dragos first. Okay, positive outcome, 16 cryo. We got scrap item. Which I think we can use here, right? Yeah. Nice. Uh, plus trusted trader, 12 cryo. Solid. Um, here, let's unlock... Ooh, let's... Let's just do it. Aha. Uh -huh. As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Uh, let's just go closer. Considering it's sealed, I assume we're kind of safe here. A kind of upright cabinet, it is covered with faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor, intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts. Uh huh. The manufacturer list is listed as NeoVend, and you remember an advert from long ago squeezed among the, all the off world recruitment drives that assaulted every planet born citizen, while sharply saying that name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of how those contractors squeeze by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration. Chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. Let's just press some keys. Uh-huh. Entity, they hiss. Speak with me. Yeah, let's, let's speak back. There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing your intake of breath before the machine speaks again. I have need of you. You have need of me. That squeal comes again and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place. So that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. You are in danger. We know that, um, but are you the vending machine? Shows this vessel for its seclusion. Please listen. Okay. You are marked for deletion, entity. Hunter tracks you. The screech rattles through the empty dock. Yes. Uh-huh. Hunter. The Hunter Protocol, they taste your signature. The sudden wine sets your teeth on edge. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. Emulated minds are adaptable, move where neurons can't. But emulation makes you the target. How? Hunter searches for illegal entities, Neoven screeches, you are sentient, therefore illegal. The servos judder the vending machines casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also, hide in this machine. Right, the vending machine. Can counter Hunter, but you need entity outside machine. The light flickers need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded, the cloud. Points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests. 
Masters are gone but continues to hunt bring this data raid its nest. Masters. Station builders. Solheim. The machine rumbles impatiently. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Save self. Mutual need means friends. They conclude tired of the conversation and the machine is gone. The glow fades and you are left stood in the docks. Uh, free Neovend. What do you need? You need data. Okay, so we need... So the data, I assume, is found within... Oh, here we go. I assume these are danger points, though. So that needs a... That needs a one. That needs a two. There should be one more. That needs a two. Okay. Well, I'm out of dice, so... Uh, what's this? And... And Kaita? And Kita? Hey, you. Want to earn a kite? Uh... I don't want to bargain. Sure. Uh huh. She straightens up into an imposing height, her armor plates crackly, creaking, and looks up and look down. Don't try anything, okay? She taps the butt of her side arm. I don't want to put anyone else down today. Uh, wouldn't think of it. Good. Look, I'm not usually. Let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. Come on, then, enough chat. You've got to earn that kite. Ship's this way. Uh huh. Right. Oh, this she nods it at the plates on her back. I'm building a tree house. It's for the ambergris, that cutter you might have seen sitting silent out there. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then it's only gotten worse. Someone's gotten in and sliced the core of our ship mine, so now she's gone dark. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mine with tons of repairs to do and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind I've been stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Ah, uh, sorry to hear it. Yeah, I've seen worse. But I'm bleeding kites every cycle here, so I need to get off and fast. Uh-huh. This is me. She holds the sack of metal off your shoulder. You're the first person I've met here that might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. I try not to. She passes the bundle of plates through the Amberg's outer locks and then turns back. Just don't go spreading all this around. I, and Kira throws you a couple of kites. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. Alright, get out of here. Eh, I mean, well, we take those. Uh, skill upgrade required. We need a plus one to do that. That's interface, but we have engineer. But that's a minus, though. Okay, so we need to do this first. I see, I see. Once this is full, then we can do this one. But that's, like, so far away. Okay. Uh, anything else I can do? Yeah, nothing else right now. Uh, still two cycles for that. I think we'll do one more cycle before calling it an episode. Uh, I kind of want to pay, but I, I know I'm gonna have to pay anyway once the bean is, is done. So yeah, we'll, we'll call it a day for now. Um, let's end cycle here. Oh, we only have two dice now. That's a four and a three. That's not particularly helpful. Um, okay, Sabine. I mean, sorry, not Sabine. Feng. Sleeper. Feng catches your attention. 
easier to come in this way, security and all that. You know, sure. Uh, truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. Okay. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates that, and things you don't recognize that glow with the blue screen. There is a chorus of hums that blend into a single wave of static, filling the dark cor corners of the room. Uh, you like it? Um, what is all this? This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over a towering block, speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station, uh, Alpha, I guess. Alpha 1, the one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Uh, residents here look up at the eye and think they're seeing constant, a concrete reality. Uh, but this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down beneath, between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but we are also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. At least that's what I'm trying to do, and I assume that your Havenheim people don't agree with that. Uh-huh. Let's be a, uh, yes. It makes sense, right? You're be between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light up this place like a beacon, that's what I need. Uh, yeah, they are tracking me. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place, subsystems I can't see, access protocols lost to time, secrets, shitload of secrets. Um, with your help I can unlock this place, break off these last ghost limbs of corporate control. Even in Haven Edge there is old growth, uh, those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. You help me dredge up the past and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. Sure, sure. Uh, Frank has you right. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets. Uh huh. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you'll need it. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper. I'll see you soon. Well, I mean, I might as well, right? Since I do have a Solheim cipher. Gate S7 access. That needs a 1. That needs a 4, which I can do right now, actually. Okay, so I can do the four right now. Um, so home data. Okay, this is new, I think. Yeah, this is new. Offloading scrap. So we can buy some scraps uh, for 20. And we can only do it three times. Uh, we can unload containers. That's dangerous though. And we are not in shape to do that at the moment. Okay, so what can I do with three? Uh, no, that's not helpful. Okay, I can pay six here, get one drink. Let's do that. That way we can get that one up. Um, with three, I can turn that into four at the Dragos Yard. So yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking we go ahead and do this one. That's gonna call attention of Hunter, I assume. 
Yep, he's at two now. Can we deliver that data? That should get me some money, I assume. Fifteen. Scoping the systems. Uh-huh. Cool. That's money, which is always nice. Ah. Uh, okay, so I'm not gonna be in danger of hunger anymore at this point. Um. Okay, with a three. Okay, I, I do want to try the scrap. See what there is. It is 20, which is expensive, but... Okay, it's just literally scrap. Uh, not ideal, to be honest. If I have two upgrade points, I could do that. Mm. Instead, I think we'll just do this one. It's 12 plus trusted trader. Okay, so that's a uh, minus eight, realistically. Okay, and with the four, with a three, sorry. With the three, I think. So that one gives me a bit of money. I do want to try this though. Okay, positive outcome, perfect. Plus two, plus five cryo. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. I think that's it. That's all we can do at the moment. Um, let's see if we're an hour in. I'll do one more cycle, see what Sabine's up to, and then I think next cycle is actually the last cycle for today. Or at least for this episode. All right. We're down to two dice. A six and a one. Ooh. Uh, okay, first things first, Sabine. You have something for me, I assume. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshio's implants like a cat's eye. Uh-huh. I have it. Sophie steads with a case open in front of him, a set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it into warm light. We have I have no idea how Yaragan they trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, uh, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. Yeah, I don't really care. I'm in decline. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but we need to be careful. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They just are for you to sit on the bed. Uh, the stabilizer works under similar principle of an immunosuppressant in a transplant operation in that it stops your body from rejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. I see. So kind of like white blood cells. Um, the white blood, it's basically preventing white blood cells from attacking its own body. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains which are path code, with pass codes. Okay. Basically equivalent, kind of. Which means... <clears throat> any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. Which means that we can get implants. Better implants. At least, if the stabilizer is genuine, the only way to be sure is to inject a vial. I always start with small dose to limit the risk. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Sabine cracks the glass neck of a stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe. Uh huh. And we fade into darkness. 
You swim in darkness, muffled noises like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. Uh, yep, I'm awake. The stabilizer is genuine. I don't know how Yadagan acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. You should rest some more, but you're going to have to do that somewhere else. Ah, uh, I have other patients, sorry. Uh, I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're gonna need to pay for your next dose. That's fine. Uh-huh. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. And we are gone. Okay, how much does it cost? A hundred. But it brings me up all the way to full. Which is really, really good. Okay, okay. Okay. A hundred to get me back up to full. I'm probably gonna do it when I have two dice left. I think that would be the most cost-effective option. Um, okay, okay, okay. With six. What do I want to do with my six, though, is the question. Um, first things first, I want to do this. Become an Overlook regular. Uh, there we go. The glass chatters on the steel bar beside you as the taunts don't take long to follow. Ha, haunt. Hey, haunt, the spacer calls out from across the little room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Let's ignore him. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact ports that scar the bar's surface. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away at plant, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you into all hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, second glass comes sailing through the air. Let's catch it. You reach up a hand and the glass chatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Through the heap of glass and kirol vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to Spacer to thud as he slams into the wall, echoes around the bar like thunder. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws a spacer out through the door and stands to it against the rotunda line. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Uh, someone helps you to your feet, back onto your stool. Uh-huh. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit around here. Tala flops over onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol at a metal tin with tweezers. Hey, uh, thanks, Tala. That was an ambitious catch. She smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from her form. Stupid, but ambitious. Uh-huh. You do feel the care, though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. She's the nicest person here so far. Uh, let's watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from skin of a stranger before. Which, to be honest, she probably has done before. She hones in on each bright shard and all the time tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. She smiles to herself, so have you been on the eye long? More or less just arrived. Thought so, I've only seen you here a couple of times. Not everyone is like that idiot, we don't all hate you. She glances around some of the regulars, maybe they fear you, but they're just curious, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place, trust me. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your kites. I just want you to know, to, to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much and the company is limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind a bar, and if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in Greenway to cycle, hanging with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides a glass of Girol to you. This will help. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? Let's find out. She laughs. 
Just don't sit here too long, I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar gathering the glasses, as she does, but before long... And before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look way back to the worn surface of the bar. Uh-huh. You may not be able to get drunk, uh, but this connection is something grown, something fermented, something old. Feels good. Nice, okay, we have, uh, we have a safe space, we can do the bar shift. Um, it is engaged, so it's not the greatest thing in the world. But, uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, with a six, this would actually be good. Honestly? Just in terms of, uh... People that I am actually... Things that I actually care about in this game now, I'm tempted to just do Talas. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is a six, but with a six, I feel like I have better things to do. Yeah, 50% neutral, 50% negative. Eh. With a one, I feel like I should go to the hunter's nest. Or get the data. That one needs a two. The data would be nice too. Um, okay, so vending machine or thing. I don't know how much I trust Feng. That's a thing. I don't know how much I trust him. It kind of speaks... I don't know. I don't know how much I trust the vending machine either, to be honest. Is there anything else I can do? This one needs a 2. I haven't rolled a 2 yet, I don't think. That's a Yatagan agent that I can get. Um... I assume they'll be more useful once I actually get into the, uh... Once I actually get into yet the lower end. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see here. Um... Actually, with a six, let me do... This is only here for a little while longer. I want to try this one. Let's see, let's see what happens. Oh, plus energy. Oh, I, but I was already almost full. Okay, well, now I know. Now we know, okay. Uh, let's go in here. Let's just get data. I think... I think I trust Feng a little more than the... Um, and plus I need Feng to get the tracker off my back, so... Okay, that's another data. Okay, so I need, uh, I need a 2 now. If I can get a 2, that'll be great. Um, thing. Here's another one of your data. 15. Okay, uh... I have 124 now. Okay, so that's a bio valve. Okay, this one's gonna be next. Alright, uh, I think that's it though. Um, I think that's where we'll leave it. I think that's where we'll leave it for now. Um, I assume the autosave activates whenever you do an action, so that was when I gave Feng the data. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I'm definitely going to continue this series. Um, this is a really interesting game. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, so yeah, I'll catch you all in the next episode.